Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're gonna to be doing a bunch of stuff in the Lego room, but the first thing I've gotta take care of is unboxing this beast of a set, 4,837 pieces in the new uh, Disney castle. It's always fun, right? Cracking it open, seeing everything inside. So here we go, I bet you there's an interior box, so I'll probably need that razor blade again. Yep, certainly is. This is the new Disney castle. I just bought it earlier today, which is a, the Brixie family was out and about having some fun at West Edmonton Mall. There we go, oh yeah. Look at all those light nougat masonry bricks in there. Woo! It's looking good. Right on, we got another uh, box here. Crack that open as well. <laughs> and the instruction manuals will be in that one there. Man, that is nice. I love that the I love the fact that uh, you know these sets come with these now. Some of the sets in the past they didn't come with the envelopes, and that was quite annoying. Oof! So we've got three instruction manuals in here actually, all with the white background, right? So three instruction manuals. This will do bags. Uh, looks like sixteen through 25, and that's the final product. So there must be 25 bags altogether. Interesting. Is there a write-up in the first one? No, this is the second one, which will do bags eight through 15. And then this must be the first one, maybe with a little bit of a write-up in there. Yeah, you can see the uh, castle, the most magical place on earth, Walt Disney World. The beautiful castle with the new colors. And then it goes over all the Easter eggs of the set as well. This is all sorts of references from the last hundred years of Disney. Pretty sure. Because this castle came out for the 100th anniversary, right? Then you can, of course, meet the designer. This looks like a beautiful set. Jose and I are going to try to build this together. She might take the lead charge on actually building it though. And then it shows you how to carry it. Don't pick it up from the sides, everybody. Make sure you grab it from underneath. <laughs> Hopefully I remember that. I don't know if we're gonna be getting a second one of these and doubling it up, but here's the uh, first building stages, one through three on that page, and then four through seven on that page there. So there we go. Massive set unboxed. Are we gonna be building this tonight? Most likely not because The Witcher was just released on Netflix. It's currently Canada Day and I think we're gonna watch that just because I'm pretty excited about that. But then uh, we'll continue down here tomorrow because I've got a bunch of stuff that we need to accomplish. Placing some new sets, uh, doing some organizing, talking about some changes, and also I've got a pretty cool event that's going to be happening in the near future as well. But there we go. We'll take care of that. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. But yeah, we'll take care of that uh, in the near future. I can't wait. <laughs> Did I need to push all the bags onto the ground? Probably not. But here we go. I've got them all sorted. And also I found the uh, two sticker sheets inside the envelope. Look at those stickers. Those are nice. And then a small sticker sheet here as well. I'm excited to see what kind of print pieces are in this set. But I guess we'll find out tomorrow when Jose and I start this massive build. Hey, you know what else showed up? The box from Brickworld. I displayed some stuff at Brickworld and it's in that box. Thank you so much, Brick Girl, for uh, shipping it back to me. I'm anxious to see the condition of everything. See, like, if it survived the shipping. Oh, looks like there's some unauthorized stuff in there. Oh, lightsaber pens, nice. Thank you. That's amazing. Also, we got something for Kevin from Citizen Brig. It's <laughs> very suiting, okay. <laughs> oh, then we got uh, some trees. Put those back in the campground. To do some repairs on those. And some mini figs. Hey, look, there's uh, Jose. And also, I'm in there as well. Yeah. And there's Benjamin or Millie. One of the two. 
And then the modular building, yep, the roof collapsed. It did that on the way there as well. No, we're gonna have to repair that again. The shrink wrap did not save the roof and also the back wall there. Looks easy enough to repair. So I'll have to repair this and then swap out some of these very valuable masonry bricks out of the bottom because no longer need those. And also change it back to a light gray sidewalk because I don't have dark gray sidewalks, right? I'm gonna put that back into Lego City along with all of these trees and also the Shelby Cobra, which looks like it's damaged as well. <laughs> to be expected though. You know, I don't know how I would bring like a larger display to a Lego convention. Like how would I ship a larger display? It would get absolutely destroyed. I tried and ship a little modular building and it gets destroyed, but that's manageable. But how would I bring like a bigger thing? I was thinking of bringing maybe like my double daily bugle. I think that would look really neat there, right? And there's no way that I would be able to bring the mansion. Hey, a lot of people were asking who owns the mansion? Like there's no owner. There's no story behind who owns this party house. Well, that's because we were in shipping. Jose and, uh, and me are in that bag, right? So we're gonna be able to put our minifigures in there as well. Benjamin, what are you doing in the corner over there? Hmm? How are you two doing this morning? You having fun? It's almost breakfast time, hey? Oh, he loves my new shoes. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Did I just pet you like a dog? I think so. We mean business on this fine Sunday morning, don't we? Woo! Got a full pot of coffee. See, everybody, look. This building here arrived in perfect condition. No big deal, right, Loon? No big deal at all, yeah. Next time I go to Chicago, I'll be shipping the mansion, I think. There we go, it's pretty much all fixed up. Just gotta do the sidewalks there. Now I get to do something that I don't have much experience with and that's putting leaves on trees. My knees are asking me, Jordan, why are you doing this on the ground? I don't know. I have no idea why I'm doing it on the ground. That's sort of weird. And look, jose has got her coffee. Cinderella, the Disney instruction manual, and she's building the Disney castle while looking after the kids upstairs. Man, look at all that Technic work. Holy cow, that's a solid looking base. Hey, you know what? Uh, the original Disney castle didn't have water around the base of it, and this one does. But I think this fine little Sunday is off to a great start. And now I can add these minifigures back to the Lego city, and like I said, I can add me, which is right there, and Jose, who's right there, to the mansion, because of course, we're gonna be the owners of the mansion. Here we go, updated story, check it out. It's 2v2 beer pong, me and Jose, versus Peter and Tanjan. <laughs> there you go, the twins are on the tennis court. Yeah, that's probably not the best spot for them. I need to find two of those like bracket things that you put on minifigures so you can make like the baby carriers. Like you see them with uh, Baby Yoda or Grogu and uh, Mando. Or I could build two custom high chairs, probably using a bracket or just get some sort of double stroller, put them in a double stroller. Hey, you know what? The mansion, I, I don't think it's finished yet. There's something that I need to do. And I need to add a support pillar uh, in the arcade because this is a big distance with no support. You see that? Yeah, so I probably need to add one or two support pillars in the arcade just to better support this floor here because that is a big span of distance. I didn't really want to add support pillars just because support pillars don't really, you know, look that good. When you look inside, you'll see the support pillars, but it is what it is. I think the roof needs that. And there's been a lot of comments in regards to the mansion saying that the minifigures will not, okay, not all of them, okay? There's been five comments saying that this is a private island. Why are there so many minifigures in the mansion? This is a private island and there's not supposed to be that many minifigures or they think that the minifigures took away from the mansion. And you know what, this is Lego. 
you're supposed to be creative with Lego, you're supposed to have fun with Lego, and one of the best ways of doing that is by creating stories with minifigures, right? So if I didn't have this guy pulling a slam dunk here, I don't think the basketball cart would look as good. If I just had, you know, five minifigures in this massive building, the owners of the mansion on the private island, I just don't think it would be as fun, so that's why I decided to add a bunch of minifigures absolutely everywhere because it tells a story and sort of develops the creativity of the mansion and I think it makes it look a lot better. These stories will change and I think there's gonna be some structural changes as well. And I think we're gonna to continue to play with the mansion design quite a bit over the next few months while it's on display. But there you go, I've uh, updated the story of the mansion, added the two owners and they're up here facing off in a game of beer pong. It definitely feels good to put that building back in the Lego City and now I've got to put my Crocs into sport mode here because we're going to be crawling underneath the table to put those trees back in the campground. I'm looking at this campground and I'm like wow there are so many trees I guess it's probably good that we're going to be adding more. So I actually ended up just putting half of them back into the campground here and then I put the other half over here by the farm. And I feel like the area around the farm is something that I've been meaning to work on for quite some time. Sure, it looks pretty good right now. It's not too bad. There's lots of trees and a nice creek and a bridge and of course the farm and also that gazebo. But I need to add texture to all of this green plate and I also need to work on these two plates over here. I've been meaning to add a farmer's market forever and I've also been meaning to uh, reconnect the gravel road uh, to the main road for quite some time as well and I just haven't gotten around to doing that. I don't know why. I think it's because when I work on this plate right here, these two plates, I just want to like redo this, not redo, but improve this entire area over here. And then I still want to add that train station uh, for the ground line. Probably somewhere over there behind those houses maybe? or maybe add it into the tunnel right there. I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do about that train station down there. Ooh, that needs to be fixed up as well. That red brick, uh-oh, and a knocked over tree. Whoa, what's going on? It's the end of the world. <laughs> yeah, I definitely need to work on just improving the quality over here by adding a ton of parts, and that includes up here on the race platform coverings as well. But I don't know, one day I'll get around to it. I want to work on that Disney castle and there's still some other stuff that I've got to take care of here in the Lego room, but it definitely feels pretty good to get those trees and that modular building back in the Lego city. So as I'm taking care of all this stuff, Jose's still upstairs dealing with the kids and also building the new Disney castle. Speaking of Disney sets, Jose also built this the other day, the Disney villain set, which is a great set. Ours either did not come with a sticker sheet or one of us accidentally recycled it. <laughs> That's probably the case, but it got stuck in that envelope there. Uh, either way, we've got a new sticker sheet. We ordered it through the bricks and pieces. We can order missing pieces from or on the LEGO website, right? So here's the sticker sheet for it. Pretty neat looking sticker sheet. Quite a few stickers, but there's actually quite a few print pieces in this set as well. So she's up there building the Disney castle. And now I'm gonna bring her this set and say, here you go. There's a sticker sheet. You can have fun putting all these stickers on as well because she is the master of stickers. But look at that. That's print. The Queen of Hearts. That's print. And also, I think there's some other print pieces on here. Oh, the, uh, the clock as well. The pocket watch. That's print. So some pretty cool print pieces, but I think it's going to look a lot better when we get those stickers applied to this set. Well, my next task was a big one, everybody, and it involved Lego minifigures. I bought a giant box of miscellaneous minifigures, and it was somewhat of a disaster. There were accessories and torsos and head elements of all sorts and types, and I've been going through trying to piece together as many minifigures as I can, and I've had some luck, you know, I've, I've come across quite a few good minifigures, but a lot of them are missing arms or accessories or head elements or whatever it may be. So I've spent, I don't know, four hours, I think, going through this giant box of minifigures, which I don't have a before shot of because 
I don't know, I've been doing this sporadically when I have had time to do it, but I've just been trying to piece together all of these minifigures here, and there are a lot of them. <laughs> like, it is actually crazy, and they're from all different themes. And I want to show you a little trick with uh, minifigures and a quick and easy way on how to identify minifigures. It's actually a really neat trick. But yeah, these are all the uh, minifigs that I've got. And that brings me to the event that I want to tell you about. On uh, July 8th, which is Saturday at 12 o'clock Mountain Time, I'm going to be hosting a WhatNot stream. And on that WhatNot stream, I'm going to be giving away 10 minifigures at random throughout the stream to 10 random people that are in the, uh, the WhatNot uh, stream. And also, uh, we're going to be auctioning off a bunch of these new minifigures. So I like having a good variety of figures just because when I host these whatnot streams, people are like, do you have any Disney? And I'm like, no, I don't. Do you have any Marvel? No, I don't. I used to. That's my famous line. I used to have them, but now I no longer do. So now that I have all of these figures, I'm going to have sort of a refreshed inventory, but I'm still a long way away from having this done. What I need to do is actually go through each of these individually and make sure that they all have all of the proper elements. And this is where I'm going to show you that trick. So the app is actually called Google Lens. I've already downloaded it from the Play Store, but we can just open that app up. And you have like this picture-like app here. So you can essentially take a picture of anything, any of these many figures here, and I'm going to do clutch powers here. I already know that this is clutch powers, but this is how he came, right? I didn't know what legs he needed or if there was any accessories uh, that we needed to add to this minifigure. So what we do is we just scan over it. We click that little search button and then it scans. And then when you scroll down, you're going to see that this is clutch powers. So you're able to identify that, oh, look, this is clutch powers and he comes with dark tan pants right and it's just an easy way to identify what figure this is and also what other accessory or pants in this case he needs and maybe a utility belt or for example if you have this iron man minifigure here but you have two helmets and you're unsure of which helmet goes with that iron man minifigure well you can just scan this iron man minifig it's going to search the results and then you can look, oh, okay, now I know which helmet goes with that minifigure. It makes it a lot easier because you can look at the torso and then you can identify which helmet matches with it. So now I know that, well, this uh, Iron Man minifigure here gets this helmet. Or for example, I wasn't sure what this minifigure was, right? So all I had to do was just scan it and then you can easily find out that this is the ironclad henchman and it belongs with this crazy helmet there that you can see on the right hand side right so then i just located that helmet and i know that that matches up with that minifigure it makes it so easy so now what i'm going to do is actually go through these minifigures one by one using that google lens confirming that every minifigure is complete and after i confirm a minifigure, I'm going to transfer it onto a plate, and then eventually I'll have multiple plates of 100% complete minifigures. You know, they can't be missing arms or missing head pieces. Like, there are a lot of incomplete figures here, and it is quite a job. But yeah, I just wanted to let you know that I've got some new inventory for whatnot, and on uh, Saturday, July 8th, we'll be hosting a stream at 12 o'clock. If you're not a member of whatnot, feel free to join using my join link and when you do join using that affiliate link you're going to get a $15 credit which can be redeemed on whatnot and when you redeem that credit it does help out the channel as well some pretty cool figures though hey eh? i've got my work cut out for me that's for sure though jose just tore open bag three the disney castle is coming along quite nicely the entire technic base has been covered with plates millie's helping out right mill <laughs> You helping out? But yeah, the entire Technic base has been covered up and then there's this moving function right here. So you can set up a dance scene. That's pretty neat. So Millie's helping out, she's right here and Benjamin's on route to help out as well. Right, Stel? You guys just hanging out today? Having a good time? Standing on everything, every opportunity you get? Yeah. 
Jose also finished up with the Disney villain set. It's pretty neat with all the sticker detail. Looks fantastic. This can very easily be removed, right? The Little Mermaid, VHS, 1989, with Ursula on there. And it'll pop open, and when you open it, you can see the film inside that has a bunch of different scenes from The Little Mermaid. So that's a neat sticker element. Too bad that's not uh, printed, but those are on two by six tiles. And just a really well-detailed cassette tape, or be VHS tape, right? Geez, when's the last time you uh, used one of these? Look, it's even uh, rewinded fully. That's a nice detail there. And that actually sits on top of the Aladdin book. You got Aladdin, sorry, Aladdin VHS cover. And you got Aladdin on the spine, Jafar on the spine there, and the Disney printed tile. And then that right there is Jafar. And when you open this up, you have Jafar as the genie inside. So pretty neat minifigure there. It's cool how he can be stowed away inside the VHS cover. Then we have the Beauty and the Beast book. That's a sticker element there. And same with these here. And then the top of it can open up, revealing the rose. Close that up. And then down here, we have Gaston tucked away inside. And over here we have Sleeping Beauty with Maleficent on the spine. And this big circular or oval element right here is printed. We have Maleficent on the cover. And this can open up as well, revealing Maleficent who is inside. So you get that minifigure as well. So it's pretty neat how all of these or minifigures can sort of be concealed within the set. Oh, there's one more. Oh, and it's within the apple right over here because you also get the apple. And this like quarter section of the apple with the leaf can be removed, revealing the evil queen with the apple inside. Now it's neat that these minifigures can be put away inside the set, but personally I want to keep them on display. But if you're like moving it or something, it's cool how you have the option of stowing all of those away and they're like little Easter eggs found throughout the set, like little hiding spots, right? I find that just a neat concept and it sort of adds more to the set. Then once again, you get the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland and also this pocket watch here from Peter Pan, which is quite the build as well. And look at that, the hook on the back. <laughs> That's cool. And the box art and instruction manual shows it being displayed like this here. So it's a pretty compact little display set for the Disney villains. I've decided to remove my minifigures from the set just so you can check it out when it's on display beside Mickey and Minnie and also Rivendell. I will say though that the new Disney castle is probably going to go where Rivendell is, so it will make more sense. It is a pretty short set. That's the villain set, so maybe something has to change here because there's a pretty big white gap there, but when we put the big Disney castle beside it, it might look pretty good. Now, when I place that Disney castle, I'm gonna have to make some serious changes to this shelf, which I don't mind because it's becoming a little bit crowded anyway. Now that I think about it, I really wanna change up my studio space shelving anyway. It's been like this for quite some time and I think it needs a refresh. Specifically, the sets up top there. Also, this shelf, I need to find a new home for the Lego sign and also the YouTube play button and the mantle that used to hold that YouTube play button is sort of buried back there. I need to hang that on the wall somewhere. And then also I need to uh, fix my window coverings. I need to go buy some, like some of the thick Bristol board or whatever, like the things that you use when you make presentations at school. You know those things? Yeah. And uh, fix my window covering because that one actually fell off. So I need to improve that. Is when the sun shines through the window, it's like, ah, you can see rays of sun coming into uh, my Lego room, which I don't like. So one day I'm going to have to redo all of this shelving, and that's going to be right away because we're going to have to place that Disney castle soon. So I'm sure we'll take care of that probably this week as well. I actually built this Viking ship last week, 
It's a pretty neat set. It sits on the track shelving right up there. And I just put it up there because that's where I had space to put it. I should probably move that as well. And I actually haven't even finished building it. There's still one more bag left. It's right down here. It's bag number seven. And that builds like this serpent. I'm going to call it a serpent, even though it doesn't. Maybe a, a sea snake. <laughs> I don't know. But that should probably go up there with some of the other pirate ships, right? Actually, where's my Creator 3 in 1 pirate ship? Oh, it's right over there by uh, Bowser's airship. So the set was actually on my radar for quite some time, specifically because of the cow build. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the boat is actually pretty neat. It's got the shields on the side. It's got like the dragon up front, right? The dragon tail on the back. It's all brick built. There's no large pre-molded pieces. These like ropes or ties actually have quite a bit of tension and they're like holding up the mass, right? Like right there too. Like these are just really cool. And that large brick built sail on the mast, it's got like the... Uh, what would that be, a raven on either side, the flag up top. It's pretty open and there's lots of exposed studs in the center. Uh, there's also this covering in the back there. And then there's this large weapon, which is actually cool. It can shoot cylinders, like sort of projectile them out and there's some more ammunition for it right down there. There's some flames because they're actually smoking some fish on the back of the uh, boat there. A little bit dangerous having, uh, you know, open flame on the boat, but why not, right? They're Vikings. And then this uh, sea serpent here was a really interesting character build. Yeah, all sorts of different points of articulation and I really enjoyed building the head. It's just really well done. The big fangs and the mouth that can open up with the tongue and the uh, flippers coming off the back of the head. And then you get uh, four Viking minifigures. Yeah, pretty cool. And you can actually build three different things because this is a three-in-one set. I decided to go with the Viking ship. But there's actually two other instruction manuals. And those are over here where I have all my other instruction manuals. But you can build like this like cottage, which is pretty neat. And then what else? Oh, yeah, like the wolf. So obviously the Viking ship is far superior than both of these, I would say. I mean, this is... I mean, not going to use a huge amount of pieces compared to the Viking ship, that's for sure. And same with this. I mean, it's a decent looking building, but the Viking ship is far better. Yeah, I've actually been meaning to get this for quite some time just because it's pretty neat. Not a bad little ship. And look at that. It spins. Down it goes into a whirlpool. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. And you know what? I really like the uh, pirate ship three in one set. So that's why this one's been on my radar for quite some time. And I'm, I'm happy with it, that's for sure. But I would definitely recommend picking it up on sale. I've heard people talking about getting it on sale on Amazon and also at Target. Just the construction of the boat was really nice and satisfying. But you do the same thing four times because obviously it's a symmetrical boat, right? I'm going to put it up there next to the other brick built ships. Just like that. See, you still can't convince me that these track shelves were a bad idea. Look at how many sets are on display above the city now. Yeah, you can't convince me otherwise. I think more is more when it comes to LEGO, as long as it's neat and tidy. You know what I mean? If it's a big mess, then I'm not a huge fan. But if it's neat and tidy like this, I'm on board, 100%. Now, the other day when we were having a look at the Eldorado Fortress, I was discussing making some changes to the LEGO City, actually expanding the LEGO City. And I would do that by packing up a bunch of the random sort of shrapnel sets that are on the bulkhead shelves above the city. And I would also hang some planes as well above the LEGO City to free up some more shelving space as well. But pack up all these sets along here or part them out if I no longer want them in my collection and also some of the sets up here on the PAX units, and then some of these boats that don't really have a home in the LEGO City right now. And then after I pack those away, I would be able to put some of the sets on the Billy shelves up on those shelves. Maybe some of the smaller Batman sets, or maybe I can pack those up as well. Uh, but maybe the typewriter or uh, the spaceship right there, or all this Mario stuff, or whatever it may be. And then I would be able to condense my uh, car displays 
probably over toward the Star Wars corner. And that would free up this space right here for the Lego City expansion. And I just wanted to let you know that I am 100% going to be doing that. Uh, what that is exactly going to be, I'm not too sure, but maybe we can build like a smaller, like a shorter table or something and get some different elevation happening in this area. And I'm for sure going to be doing that once we're done the amusement park. Just wanted to clarify that uh, I have decided that I will be doing that. So it seems like I am avoiding using Google Lens to verify all of these minifigures at all costs. I'm like, ah, we should make these shelving changes. Oh, we should build this set. Oh, let's take a look at this Disney villain set. <laughs> Uh, but it has to be done, so that's what I'm going to do with the remainder of my work day. I just wanted to uh, take you along on the journey today. I think I had a lot of fun so far on this fantastic Sunday. I hope you did as well. Thank you so much for popping on by. Please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff. And everybody, farewell. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.